that we are at. Right there. For 62.65. What's up everybody? So uh, I know it's been a very, well quite a long time, it's been months since I've done anything regarding the Focus ST engine uh, that we're building, in the process of building. Not even, we're just in the process of prepping to start assembly and uh, this is going to be pretty much one of the first big steps to actually getting it done. And uh, we have here our, all of our pistons, one through four, and they're all labeled. Um, I did that previously, this is piston number two, and then also all of the pins are labeled. And uh, basically, so yeah, right here, this is pin number three, I don't know if you can see it. So that's pin number three and this is piston number two. So now I'll go into detail of why pin three is in piston two and why they're mixed up. See, we have here piston number one, which has pin number four in it. So. Basically, we I have gone ahead and uh, previously when I got all of the components, I did a, uh, a first measurement of literally everything I got. So rings, I got pin measurements, piston measurements, and then the little circlips. They all measured out the same, so I'm not going to stress about those. Rings, I already gapped those. So those are pretty much dedicated to the cylinder that I gapped them to. So can't do anything with that. I just did that to kind of get an idea of what all the weights were to begin with, but that's not really going to come into play with uh, the balancing of the pistons. So this is a little weird. Uh, I don't know why there was a change in measurements here, but for our pins and our pistons, um, the initial measurement here, these are all the, the values I got. I mean, they are different I and mean, it's just going to be granted. It's they're not perfect. Um, as you see, these are actually higher than these measurements, which I just took right now with the current uh, setup we have going on right here. So, um, whenever you're doing this, always get current measurements because this is just proof to tell you that just because you measure things once when you first get them doesn't mean they're always going to be exactly the same later down the road. So, always do, always, you know, it's better to measure a bunch of times and um, what? Three times. <laughs> it's better to measure three times and you know only decide to remove material once instead of having to you know screw yourself and you go in to measure and all your measurements are wrong. So the uh, the pins were different weights and uh, also I did a piston remeasurement so second measurement for the pistons and they actually ended up being lighter as well so they followed the trend that the pins followed as well so these measurements measurements were higher than these ones but these are the current measurements that we have here and these are the current measurements that we're going off so when it comes to the orientation of the pins so see here it's i mean it's kind of conveniently one two three four but that was based off of the weight of the pins so up here that was this weight in comparison to the weight of the piston so basically what we did was we put the heavier pins with the lighter pistons and then the uh, lighter pins with the heavier pistons to kind of even out everything before we actually get started. And with that in consideration, so we organized them corresponding to, you know, lighter pistons, heavier pins, and then we went ahead and measured them on, an, on the scale. And then right here is our total measurements for the pistons and the pins themselves. So this is what we're going to be going off of to basically even everything out to the tenth of a gram. That's what we're going. That's the standard that we're going by with these. So we're going to stick to that. So right here, as you can see, with one piston number two um, is going to be pretty much the one that we're going, to, we're going to be removing the most material from, and we're going to be trying to match piston number one, which is the lightest on this paper, or well, just in general, this is the lightest piston that we have here. So we're going to have to get all three of these to match this measurement because it is the lightest. So now comes the process of removing material. So it, it varies based on, you know, different piston designs. Um, we're going to focus today on, or tonight, on um, removing material. We're going to try to mostly remove them from the pins. And basically how you do that is you, you remove material from the inside. We'll get into it later when we go over it. But we've labeled the inside here with Sharpie just so we can have a reference of how much material we have touched and how deep we have gone in. And uh, on the other side, we have it as well. And pretty much you just want to remove an even amount of material from each side of the pin. 
Now when it comes to the pistons, um, some pistons are designed differently. Sometimes these little ribs here are thicker. Um, with these ones, we if we uh, move on to removing material from these pistons, we're gonna be kind of chamfering this edge here, 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 and here. Not too much material, just enough to, you know, actually change the weight of the piston if need be. Um, this is pretty stressful just because I've never done it before. Usually machinist, you take all this stuff to a machinist and they have, you know, the experience and everything of, of that nature to actually do this correctly. We're taking it upon ourselves um, because, you know, I kind of want to do it. I just, I feel like if anybody's going to do it and if anybody, like if, if I want anybody to do it, it's going to be me. So we're going to go ahead and do this, see where it takes us and uh, yeah, going on this adventure. So this mechanism here, this, this tool is going to be for the rods. So we'll be going over that in a separate video. Tonight we're just going to be going over the pistons and then when we are ready for the rods, which should be soon. So we'll get the pistons done and then the rods done and then we'll show you how to use this and how to weigh everything out with that and then get to removing material with this guy with the rods. But for now, we're going to focus on the pistons and the stressful process, well, at least stressful for me because it's my first time. So the, the process of actually removing material from the pistons and balancing everything out. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> All right, so uh, off camera, we, we went ahead and uh, actually balanced or removed material from um, two of the other pistons because obviously piston number one is going to be our, uh, our basically our, what, what should I call it? Our um, baseline. Our baseline. Piston one is going to be the baseline for all of the other pistons based on weight. So right here, it was you the can lightest. See, so yeah, it, it was the lightest out of all of them. So we didn't have to remove any material, as you can see, 462.65. And then um, piston number two, that was this one right here. So this one was the one where we had to remove the most material. So let me just get into how we removed the material and why we decided to go that route. So personally, I didn't even want to touch the pistons just because, you know, it seems like a very fragile, you know, part when it, comes, when it comes to like removing any material and then affecting the structural rigidity of it. So we actually ended up getting lucky and we were able to remove most all of the material that we needed to from the the wrist pins so <laughs> i heard of this method through um there's this company called uh, i don't know if anybody's heard of it but it's called high performance academy uh they go into you know different ways of building performance engines and then they say that this is a pretty common method of removing the materials from the piston assembly for the rotation assembly so we went ahead and did that it took as you can see on the paperwork it took uh, it was at 463.16 so to give you an idea of how much material we had to remove compared to these guys down here because these are at 462.75 grams grams and this is all in grams um, it's quite a big difference when you're comparing the the other two pistons from piston number two so, like I said, we were able to remove everything, um, all the weight from the actual wrist pin. And just to, so you guys can see, this is piston number two. It's got a two on it. And I'm just going to show you guys that we are at right there 462.65. And that was our baseline for piston one. And here's piston one right here with the wrist pin in it. And this is all, these are all measurements with the wrist pins inside. Let me just get a, uh, sometimes it takes a couple tries to get the exact measurement. It's pretty much- You're getting six, six. Yeah, you get the point. So I got a repetitive measurement of 462.65 before we started and that's what I'm going off of for a baseline. So now, well, all we have left is piston number four, which is this guy right here. And I'm just gonna do the same thing that I have been doing this whole time. And just taking the wrist pin and uh, removing material. So what you need for that is the, um, it's a Dremel or anything you can use with the, uh, you know, just to have that, just, you know, a Dremel-like tool. Um, and then you have to get a carbide um, carving bit. And how much was this? 
It's like 10 bucks. It's like 10 bucks at Home Depot. You can pick them up in any like hardware store really. But um, basically you take the, the bit and you kind of just remove material from the inside, not the outside, <laughs> from the inside of the actual pin. So when you're doing this, you have to keep in mind that you don't want to re remove material from one side only. You have to, you know, kind of switch between each side so you don't kind of off balance the, the pin because it does actually come into effect. So you want to explain why we're using a carbide bit rather than like any other? Bit? Well, the carbide bit, it, it really, it's a stronger material. It's a stronger material, so it's gonna, you know, help remove a lot of material, but it, it all depends on like the force you put into it. But with this, we're kind of just letting the bit do most of the work. So you're kind of just giving light force on the you're inside. Massaging it. You're like massaging it. And you don't wanna <laughs> like go for it and cause a gouge. You just want even material removal. So we'll get into that. And then once you've done that, you want to flip it over and then just go to the other side and kind of massage it out. Just kind of, you know, keep track of how much material you are removing. So after you're done with that side, like I said, you want to flip it over and then go to the other side that you haven't touched yet. And then just same process. All right, so now that I have removed uh, some material, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh the wrist pin with its corresponding piston. And what we're going for is, like we said earlier, 462.65 grams. So we're gonna see where we're at here. We started with this piston, we started at 462.75. So that gives you an idea of where we started. Now we're gonna check. So as you can see, we're getting closer to that desirable weight. I'll weigh again. Let's get a repeatable measurement. 462.6. So I'm just gonna do one more. I have to do three at least. Yeah, so six eight. So generally you you do this by the tenth of a gram, so that would be acceptable. But I'm gonna go as far as getting it pretty close or like straight on to the 6.5 measurement. Um, just because, you know, I'm a perfectionist, so I'd like to make sure everything is good. And, um, and this is probably gonna be same. easier to shave down than the rods, which will also have to be balanced into the equation. Yeah, so like I said, the pistons are comp they're balanced as well as the rods too. So we'll get into that and how to use this whole mechanism here and then how to remove material from the rods too which we're gonna be using this uh, belt sander that we rigged up here. <laughs> but it's gonna work. So that's what we have and that's what we're offered with. So we don't have a legit belt sander, like a tabletop belt sander. So we're just gonna be using this and uh, see if this is any luck for us. And if not, then we'll figure out another way to do it. But as of right now, this is gonna be our method. But considering the fact that I want it to be, you know, as best as it can be. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove, um, what was it, three hundredths, we at six three eight, hundredths so of a gram, and uh, get it down to that six five. So I'll get it down to that, and then we'll get back to you guys after I get it back to the or get it to the measurement that I like. All right. So we got all of them even recorded here. One, two, three, four, and their corresponding pins, and they're all even after the uh, the weight reduction. <laughs> so now that we're done with that, I'm just gonna just for peace of mind, I'm gonna go through each of them, and as long as they're within you know the tenth of a gram, then I'm not gonna really freak out too much. But this is piston number one. There's that measurement. And that was at 6.8. This is piston number two. I'm read 6.6. Six. Piston number three. Let's do it again. We may have to remove some more material off of this. Where are you at? 
It's at 6'8", it's reading. 6'6", uh, six, six. do one more time. Six seven, so might have to remove some more of that. And then number four here. Six eight again. Six nine, let me just zero it out. Six, seven. So, if you really want to get down to the hundredth of a gram, I mean, it really doesn't matter too much about that as long as they're within the tenth of a gram, like in that range. Um, but yeah, uh, now that that's all squared away, we can now move on to the rod balancing and uh, continue with that realm of, you know, the rotational assembly. And uh, yeah, so we hope you enjoyed. Um, I was very stressed in this portion just because. There's a lot of money we're dealing with, and it's a lot of, um, I guess, you know, there's, if you do something wrong, there's a lot of room for failure. So I'm really glad that we didn't really have to touch the pistons, uh, and then we were actually able to remove all the material from the pins. Um, like I said earlier, it depends on the brand of piston you get, the design of the piston you get, where you can remove the material. But from what I've seen, the best option is to chamfer the edge right here. So basically just, you know, lightly graze this edge and this edge, this one, and this one. And that'll give you the, um, the weight reduction that you're looking for. Uh, if you don't feel like the, uh, the wrist pin method will suit your needs. So yeah, we hope you enjoyed. Uh, next video for the engine build will be the rods, which I'm hoping we can get out soon. It'll, it'll definitely be sooner than the last one with the, with the rings that we did. Uh, just because I'm trying to be on schedule and get this done by summertime of this year. So it's 2019 now. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully we can get that video out to you guys and show you how to do the rod balancing. And then from there, we can actually start assembling. So I'm looking forward to it. I uh, hope you guys are looking forward to it. And um, if, you, if you like our content, feel free to subscribe. Uh, like the video if you liked it. And then uh, if you have any questions you want to ask, uh, comment below. Um, We'll put our Instagram like right here. If you want to follow us on Instagram, keep up with all the rest of our builds and stuff. And um, yeah, we thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.